Hi everyone, I'm about to begin a new Yellow Orchid watercolor painting. But before I start work on this painting, I'm going to first explore compositional and color possibilities by doing a few quick preliminary studies. The photo that you see over here is a photo that I recently took at an arboretum on Long Island, and I'm going to use it as my subject matter. Before I get into any detail, I break the image up into basic parts. We have the stem that comes just about there. Then there's going to be an orchid over here. I'm going to leave out a bunch of orchids that I see in here because I think they add clutter to the composition. But I do like this one down here. There's another one right over here towards the edge of the paper. And basically they form a large rectangle of flowers. One with an epicenter right about there and the other with an epicenter right about there. Having broken up my paper into large basic shapes tells me where I'm going to place the orchids. Now I start to indicate where the individual petals are going to fall. And I do that by determining the center of the flower. Yeah, there's a little center right there. And then radiating center lines out in the directions of the individual petals. I am concerned with proportion and composition. I keep my line work light enough that I can erase my preliminary lines. It's important to establish basic shapes and the relationships of petals to one another before becoming too concerned with developing any detail at all. Okay, that flares out. I'd like to get some rid of some of the line work. It's a little confusing. Okay. The uh, kneaded eraser is a wonderful eraser to work with. I find it the least damaging eraser for paper, erasing on paper. Drawing is a process for me of making the initial statement, which was the basic shapes, and I still got to get into that. Then looking at everything carefully, looking at your subject, and making corrections. Evaluating what you see against those basic placement shapes, and then moving things around. So everything fits. And I don't only look at the positive shapes. I look at the spaces in between, and I look at the shapes created by things that overlap. For example, that petal overlaps that. So I look at that little wedge of a shape that's created there, and I draw it in. Drawing is almost like meditating. You lock on to something and you observe it at its infinite variety and try to only be aware of what you're drawing. Any energy, intellectual energy, put into conversation while you're working subtracts from your focus on the actual work. Okay, and that, that actually evolves into a, a petal right about there.
My objective in the drawing is to analyze and capture as accurately as I can all the different relationships of positive and negative forms that make up the orchid. I also simplify and eliminate what I consider to be non-essential detail. I'm going to have to move that stem down. I cleaned it up a little bit more with my kneaded eraser and redrew some of the lines. Now I'm ready to lay in the color. And instead of using my regular sable paintbrushes, I'm going to use these Pentel Aqua brushes that I filled with watercolor. The paint has been mixed with water to the degree of color saturation that I need for the first applications of my color washes. These brushes filled with watercolor paint are ideal for making quick watercolor sketches. I also keep one loaded with just plain water that can be used to dampen small areas of the paper. This aqua brush has been dipped into my palette and charged with some color. Squeezing the body of the aqua brush dispenses clean water into the tip of the brush. So you see how the aqua brush can be used just like a regular paintbrush to pick up paint from the palette. And now I'm working the magenta into the tip of the orchid. I just switched to an aqua brush filled with Winsy Yellow and I'm adding plain water to encourage the paint to intermix. While the paint is still wet, color can be lifted out to lighten areas of the petal and create modulations from more saturated to less saturated areas of color wash. I'm continuing to apply Winsy Yellow with an aqua brush, and now I'm squeezing the brush to dispense more paint into its tip. Then I switch to a regular paintbrush to pull down some of the color with clean water. Now I'm dipping my aqua brush loaded with magenta into magenta that is on my palette. This will result in strengthening the color saturation on my brush. I'm mixing Winsy Yellow with magenta and applying it to darken that area of the petal. The brush can easily be cleaned by rinsing it in clean water. I'll continue to develop this quick watercolor sketch with the painting techniques that I just showed you. But keep in mind that the primary purpose of this video demonstration is to show how I develop the drawing stage of a watercolor painting. I'm going to dip my aqua brush into a little bit of that cerulean blue that I see there. Pick up a green tint. And then I'm going to work that right in, right about there. I think I needed it. Drag down the color, which is some plain, clean water. Work them in while everything is wet, wet into wet. That'll give you good results. But as soon as it starts to set up like that, stay away from it until it's completely dry. Very quick rough sketch that I did in the garden of summer irises a couple of weeks ago. Notice how I lift the paint onto the brush. I don't put a tip down. You'll damage the tip. I always work from the side. And when I mix it on my palette, I never work with a tip. I'll always work from the side like that. It keeps the tip nice and sharp. Same thing when you, you work into the paper. Don't put your brush down perpendicular to the paper. Work on an angle. This petal is dry now. And I'd like to just adjust the greenish hue there. Yeah. See, I mentioned before, once a wash is dry, that's when you could continue to enrich it. Either paint wet into wet, this is the rule, wet into wet, or allow your washes to dry completely, and then 
rework them. Plain water. And a little bit of the green. Time to enrich this tone. See, this is what you can do with watercolor. You can glaze all the areas whence they're dry. Like I would do in my larger piece, I dampen the background. In preparation for adding a wash of color. In the photo, this area is fairly dark. I'm going to go to my pre-mixed combination of brown matter and Antwerp blue. I often use that combination as a gray color and I'm going to wash in the area that I see very dark. And that dark area does carry up into here. And it works its way down to a flower pot that is wonderful brown matter. And with a little green, which looks like out of focus leaves from the orchid itself. I'm going to throw some of that in here. Get some of that up there. And I see a little green over here. I don't want to work back into it. Everything that I accomplish in this background needs to be done as wet into wet. The background colors are dry now, and what they represent is a paraphrasing of what's actually in the background. There was a flower pot here, and some very blurry, out of focus leaves in this area, and the rest was basically dark. Now, the stem of the orchid plant has a lot of green in it and, and some brown. What I intend to do is use a combination of olive green and a foundation wash of burnt sienna. Beautiful brown. Now I flow in the burnt sienna. And there, I carry it through. Then on top of the burnt sienna, while the burnt sienna is wet, I'm going to flow in my olive green. And the objective is to have the olive green push the burnt sienna to the sides of the stem. Now, if I want to accentuate the green effect, I can actually lift some color out. The way I do that is I touch it with my dampened brush there and there, blot it onto a piece of paper towel, and flow some more green. See what happens? I retain the burnt sienna edge that I want. 
but the green dominates. It becomes a green stem. The quick watercolor sketch is finished. And now it's time for me to begin the larger and more detailed version of this yellow orchid watercolor painting. I hope you enjoyed the video and found the painting tips that I included helpful.